All right. Well, uh, yes, if you need to, if, if you want uh, permission to record, say so in the chat, but I'll just kick it off again. I'm Kyle Rohrink, Executive Director of the Great Basin Water Network, and we've been working with other NGOs, uh, Beaver County, as well as other counties and tribes um, to raise awareness uh, about the West Desert water grab. And the first phase of the water grab is the Pine Valley project. And, uh, and we have uh, some, you know, explosive new details about that project. And, you know, I think uh, the folks on this call e e exemplify uh, the way that, that we always come at these dangerous, unnecessary and expensive projects. Uh, you know, we have a diverse, um, uh, you know, group here with uh, Commissioner Whitney uh, from Beaver County. Uh, the chairwoman of the Indian Peaks Band, uh, Tamara Borchard Slayton, and obviously with the Rivers Council. And so, you know, with that said, um, you know, we believe in strange bedfellows and we also believe in transparency and good data and good science. And we know that uh, we're not getting that with this project. And so, you know, there are a myriad of avenues I could go down um, as it relates to it, why this is a terrible effort, but I'm going to hand it over to Zach right now to explain the latest conflagration uh, in data and analysis on behalf of Iron County um, to, uh, to support this unnecessary project. So, Zach, please, uh, please take it away. Thank you very much. I'm gonna. I'm Zach Frankel, the executive director of the Utah Rivers Council, and I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a rhetorical question, a scenario. What if you were a banker and your job was to issue loans to members of the public, and someone walked in and said, "I want to get a car loan. I want to buy a brand new car, and let me show you a picture of the car. I want to borrow, you know, thirty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars, or these days sixty thousand dollars for a brand new car." And here, Mr. Banker, is the car. I want to show you the value of it. And they show you a car that's 10 years old. They show you a car that's 15 years old. And the price is 15 years old. As a banker, you'd say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are you showing me this brand new car from 15 years ago? Don't you know what's happened in the last 15 years? And you might even wonder yourself, am I being conned here? Is this a scam? What's going on? Today, we are here to unveil the research that we have done out of the proposed $260 million groundwater project called the Pine Valley Water Project. It's an 85 mile long pipeline to suck water out of the aquifers of neighboring Beaver County and take it to Cedar City area, Iron County, because we're told that community is running out of water. And I'd like to show the results of what we learned in the data, because numbers matter. Um, can you all see my screen? Someone give me a thumbs up. Yeah, we can see it, Zach. Thank you. Here's the report, um, which is uh, available on uh, a couple of websites and we'll um, share it with you today so you can start thumbing through it. Um, what we are looking at is the water demand. So let's talk a little bit about how water demand works. How do you calculate water demand? If someone could let this person in, there we go. So how is future water demand calculated? It's just like a loan, because that's what's at issue is, should we spend money on a new water project? So it's really actually quite simple. It's just water use times population growth. It's just two numbers multiplied by itself. That's how the water supply industry calculates future water needs. And that population growth times water use is future water demand. And the reason that future water demand matters, of course, because it's future government spending. And so the Central Iron County Water District has done this analysis. And in the draft environmental impact statement, they have an equivalent graph to this one, which we've we've presented here. It's their data here. We haven't altered their data. This is just, we just changed the graphics a little bit to make them more clear. And so when Iron County Water District forecast future water needs, they came up with this curve, this red line, 
And what they did is they just multiplied water use times population growth. And you can see that blue background is their water supply. And so ostensibly when the red line leaves that blue region in the background, the Iron County area is quote unquote run out of water. The problem is the water district used a very old population data from 10 years ago. They ignored population data from 2017 and 2022. It's not our population data. They're not our computations. They're all from the Chem Gardner Institute, which is the state of Utah's official source for population forecasts. But by picking really old water, or excuse me, population growth forecasts, it is akin to trying to buy a car using a very old car model from 10 years ago. When you use more current population forecasts, you get that orange line. And the difference between those two numbers is a 46% exaggeration of future water needs. In other words, the Central Iron County Water District use faulty data to exaggerate the future need for water in Iron County by 46%. And the purpose of that was to justify this $260 million spending project. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. When you look at water conservation and you measure success, it's quite simple to see that their water conservation is more hype than reality. Iron County Water District set its water conservation goal of reducing water use every year by a simple percentage. This is a common measurement. How much should we reduce water use by? And Iron County said, we're going to reduce water use in Iron County by 0.56%, less than one half of 1%. If you came home and your spouse said to you, honey, our credit card spending's out of control. We've got to tighten our belt and clamp down on spending. We're reducing credit card spending by 0.5% this year. You'd just laugh. That's ridiculous. By comparison, here's Las Vegas's water conservation goal between 2002 and 2020. Again, according to Las Vegas, according to the Southern Nevada Water Authority, they reduced water use by 2.6% per year. That's a five-fold increase in the water conservation goals that Iron County Water District has set for itself. And it's not just Las Vegas. There are a number of Western communities. We've shown just a small sampling here that have set goals to reduce their water use over a long period of time by 2% or more. So if we just ask the question, what if Iron County had the very, very modest water conservation goal of a 1% reduction per year, we come back to this graph and we can just multiply that 1% reduction times a current population forecast and we get this new green line and once again, there's no need for spending $260 million inside Iron County. There's no need to save, to, to waste all of this money. So this is a major problem. Taxpayers, effectively the banker that we talked about earlier, are being swindled out of money that they don't need to spend. And it's not just about taxpayers, it's also about water rates, because one of the biggest problems inside Iron County is their own study, which found the, the Central Iron County Water District commissioned their own study for this project, which found that they would have to increase water rates, water, excuse me, water rates anywhere from 360% to 700% inside Iron County. That was their own study, it wasn't our study. And yet they ignored what impact those rate increases will have on local rate payers in reducing demand. To just wrap up, I ask one more question. You know, Americans right now 
are worrying about gasoline prices. We're reading the headlines, we're watching the gas prices at the gas station, and we're worried about how that impacts us. Are we honestly asked to believe by the Iron County Water District that nobody in Iron County cares about a 360% or a 500% or a 700% increase in water rates? Are we honestly being asked to believe it's not gonna affect water use at all? Because once those rates go up, water demand will go down. None of that was forecast by the water district. We can't just lay down as taxpayers for $260 million of spending that has major impacts. Now here to talk more about the impacts of this groundwater project and what it means for local residents and water users are two speakers, the first of whom is the, is, excuse me, Tamara Borchardt Slayton, that we're honored to have the chairwoman of the Indian Peaks Band of the Paiute Tribe in Utah speak more about this project. And I thank you for your time. Chairwoman Borchardt Slayton, uh, the floor is yours. As I was talking and it was muted, <laughs> Um, thank you. The Pine Valley Water Project is something that is really important for the Indian Peaks Band because not a lot of oh, not a lot of people know or understand that um, the Indian Peaks Band, our, our original reservation property, was located in Beaver County. Um, if you look at the Southern Heights history, it's uh, it's full of of horrible federal policies that failed us. So the Indian Peaks Band was established in the early 1900s by executive orders. The reservation was located in Beaver County. If you ever go out uh, to the Indian Peaks Wildland Preserve, that was our original reservation. In 1954, we were federally terminated with uh, three other bands of Southern Paiutes. Um, and from then on, we became the state's problem, essentially, because that federal trust responsibility was severed. So we were no longer an issue for the federal government. Mm -hmm. And what took place during the 50s until the 80s was a rapid decline in who we were as people. For every one birth, there was three deaths. Our average lifespan was the age of 50, 45, 50. Um, we were essentially becoming extinct. Um, in April 3rd, 1980 is when the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah Restoration Act was enacted. So what that did was it allowed five bands that make up the Paiute Indian Tribe. So the Indian Peaks Band, the Cedar Band, the Shiwis Band, the Kanash Band, and the Kinshuren Band um, to come together and it underneath the umbrella of the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah, which is the federally recognized entity. But each of the bands have their own autonomy and we have our own autonomy. Um, back in the 50s when we lost our reservation property and it was turned into uh, the wildland preserve that it currently is, we still retained our rights out there when it came to mineral and subsurface rights. So the fact of the matter is the Pine Valley water is essentially our water, um, the Indian Peaks Band water, and BLM, the Central Iron County Water Conservatory, never has ever approached the Indian Peaks Band, or for the matter, the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah until the tail end of uh, this project and this study. It was actually at the beginning of 2021 and the end of 2020 when we learned about this project. We were never notified. If you look at all the federal policies when it talks about consultation with tribes, um, BLM failed us in that federal policy because they never consulted us. There was never any type of consultation that took place. And if you go to page 53 of the DEIS that was released, they know that we have water rights out there because of the direct... Um, language in there that talks about if the tribe concludes that there is any type of water out there that we need to try to get them adjudicated through 
the state of Utah or through uh, the federal district courts. So they know about this, but they failed to reach out to us. They failed that trust responsibility that they have to a tribe. Um, ultimately, Cedar City wants to take tribal water in Pine Valley without consequence and proper consulta consultation, justifying its decisions on inflated data and outdated projections. This new report underscores that Iron County's water officials cannot be trusted with the numbers supporting the project. How could we ever trust them to respect our heritage and our culture and our water in Pine Valley? Uh, thank you. Well, thank you, Chairwoman, for those compelling and disturbing words. And now you know, I would like to um, introduce uh, uh, Beaver County uh, Commissioner Mark Whitney, um, who's been uh, who's been on the front lines uh, and and taken on this project uh, for quite some time. And Commissioner, please uh, go ahead. Kyle, oh, thanks so much for inviting me, and welcome everybody else. Sure, appreciate everybody. Finally, as some has called us strange bedfellows, but you know what? We're we need to stand united in this because I'm gonna age, I'm gonna date myself a little bit on this, but no one's been in this fight longer than me. I was I started in this in 2006 when the filing first was unjustly filed upon those water rights, and we tried to fight this thing, uh, and we have done ever since. Since then. We've had great partners step up to finally realize just how phony that this filing really was. We was outnumbered politically. We finally decided to shift from, from the politics and take it scientifically. It needs to be scientifically driven. And the hydrological, the geological, everything, this is an interbasin water aquifer. It doesn't just affect Beaver County. It affects the whole West Desert of the state of Utah, including the Great Salt Lake, and also parts of Nevada, Lincoln County, uh, uh, White Pine County, all of these. It is such a detrimental situation to stick a straw in the ground out. There are several of them to send to Iron County when there is not even a recharge in that aquifer to support what they want to suck out of the ground. You don't have so many straws in the ground at one time. And so we're going to continue this and I appreciate everybody's efforts on this once again to draw this and uh, the conclusion as doing this uh, scientifically and all of the co comments that have gone forward on the DEIS has just been so welcomed. And we got to stay united on this because there's so many of us. And just, you know, just in closing, I'm going to keep it short and quick, but just in closing, this new report underscores that the project is unnecessary and unjustly based on bad data. If Central Iron County Water Conservancy District can't get this right, what else are they gonna fabricate? And so once again, thank you everybody for your support and helping us in this effort to stop this unjustified false water grab. Thanks again. Well, thank you, Commissioner, uh, for that. And, you know, I want to I want to thank uh, Zach and Tamra and the Utah Rivers Council team and uh, and so many others. Um, you know, I think what 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 the report, you know, highlights is what we're seeing in, you know, just so many avenues, uh, you know, they're, they're fudging the numbers with uh, population estimates. They're purposely uh, narrowing the, uh, the hydrographic and geographic scope. They're trying to limit what we know will ultimately be the true impacts on, on wildlife and air quality and just so many other areas. But, and I think this is, this sentiment has been, um, conveyed by many here, you know, if they're going to fudge or fabricate, um, you know, just on population data, what else is, is there, you know, and, you know, right now we're at more than 90 pages of, uh, of comments on the DEIS and the deadline is, is on Friday. And, you know, we've certainly found, um, many other areas, but I think this, uh, you know, again, we can just see that this project is, is unnecessary. 
Um, they they don't need it. And, you know, we uh, we hope the report makes that abundantly clear. And if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to um, to fire ahead.